Hello everyone, I'm Alex, a Solution Architect at UiPath. Today we'll go step by step through a use case of PO processing while focusing on the new features that we are using. Right off the bat, we'll be using one of our new capabilities, the out-of-the-box machine learning model for extracting data from purchase orders. I'll start by creating a new project in AA Fabric. The out-of-the-box model is great for getting us started, but in order to get the most out of it, we should retrain it using our own documents. And to do so, I'll first create a new dataset. Our dataset is empty, but we will fill it with data exported from Data Manager. A new capability in 2010 is the inclusion of Data Manager within AI Fabric. In order to create a new document labeling instance, click about document understanding, and I will just create a new data manager instance. I'll call it POs and link it to my POs dataset. Once this is done, we need to wait a little bit for our data manager instance to finish deploying. As the status has changed to available, I can now freely access data manager within AI Fabric. The first step that I want to do is to import the PO schema for the machine learning model. As you can see, the schema was successfully imported. Now all the default fields have been populated. Before importing the documents, make sure that in the settings of Data Manager, you have an OCR endpoint properly configured. Select the appropriate OCR method, OCR endpoint URL, and OCR key. Now I can just click the Import Documents button create a new batch, I'll just call it all files, and I'll drag and drop my files here. All I have to do is click yes and wait. With the documents imported into Data Manager, and before we start doing any labeling, is the time for adding any extra fields that we want extracted. I want to extract this ship via value from my POs. So I'll just create a new regular field, and I will leave it with the default settings. Now that it's created, I can extract new data that wasn't initially included in the base model. Vice versa, for any fields that I don't need extracted, I can just come and delete them from the existing schema. Before getting into the labeling, there's one other thing that I can do in order to make my job significantly easier and faster. I can go to Data Manager Settings, access the pre-labeling tab, and here, configure the public endpoint for purchase orders as pre-labeling URL. I will also configure my document understanding key and now I have access to this predict button. When I click it, Data Manager will automatically invoke the base model in order to determine the tags that should go into this document. Let's wait for it to finish. Data Manager has automatically run my document through the base model for purchase orders. As you can see, a lot of the fields have already been correctly identified by the base model. What I want to do is to also tag the new field that I need extracted, correct these product codes here, and on to the next document. All right, I fast forwarded to all of the documents being labeled. Suffice to say, the same process was repeated for each page. The time has come for me to export the data directly from Data Manager and into a Fabric. So I'm just going to press the export button, give it a name, and hit submit. What Data Manager does before exporting the data is a sanity check. If fields have not been tagged in at least 10 documents, the export will be stopped. I need to take a decision because I don't have enough data in order to properly retrain the model for these fields. I have the option to mark them as hidden or to delete them. In my case, I will simply mark them as hidden because if in the future I will want to make use of them, I can just remove this hidden setting. I'll just show you for discount, go to settings, I will mark it as hidden and hit save. I'll do the same for the rest of them and then export the data. Now that all the items are hidden, I can try to export again. I know that my export has successfully finished because the export button has finished glowing. I can just close the data manager, go back into a fabric, go to my data sets, and for POs, I have this new export here that came directly from data manager. 
In order to use this new dataset, I will create a new out-of-the-box package. I'll choose a UiPath document understanding model, and of course, the purchase order base model, version 2.0, and very important, I can see right here that my package is retrainable. I'll just hit submit, and I will just go with the default configuration. I don't need an OCR engine because I will rely on my robot to digitize the documents. There we go. I have a new ML package that is not being used currently. I don't want to deploy it as it is. I want to improve it through retraining. For that, I will create a new pipeline. I can choose a full pipeline run or just a train run. As an input dataset, I will use the export that I just got from Data Manager. I don't need to mess with any other parameters, I can just hit Create. My pipeline has been created and has been queued to run. After a short while, the status of my pipeline has changed from queued to running, which means an A robot is working hard right now to retrain my ML package. All I have to do is wait for it to finish, and then I will be able to deploy the newly retrained package into an ML skill. A while later, as A Fabric has finished working its magic, my pipeline run has finished successfully. You can see this because the status has changed to successful. The only thing left to do now is to deploy the newly trained ML package as an ML skill. Just go to ML skills, create a new skill, I'll choose my package, and I will select the newly trained version, which is 2.1. And that's it. I will click Create, and AFabric has started working on deploying my ML skill. Shortly, the status will change from deploying to available, and I will be ready to consume this ML skill from the robot. Speaking of which, let's move on to UiPath Studio. As AI Fabric has finished deploying our ML skill, it's time we put it to use. But before we do, let me give you a quick overview of our setup. First, a look at our input file. On the first page, we have a PO that's actually the piece of resistance. First of all, it's rotated, and I'm going to feed it as it is into our document understanding solution because it is able to handle such problems out of the box. The second challenge it poses is to the ML extractor. I have not used a document with a similar layout to train it, so the ML extractor will first encounter this layout during the extraction phase. The second PO shouldn't pose much of a challenge. I have used this layout in my training dataset. Next, a quick look inside the taxonomy manager. I have a taxonomy for POs covering all the fields that we defined in data manager, but I have also added a couple of extra fields. I called one a document approval field, which is a Boolean, and the comments field, which is a text. The special thing about these fields is they do not require reference. This is a powerful feature that allows us to combine a data validation action and a form action into one. Without too much focus on the code, let's quickly run through it. After loading the taxonomy, I will digitize the document using UiPath document OCR. Next, in classify document scope, I'm going to make use of our new intelligent keyword classifier in order to benefit from its capability of identifying multiple logical documents within the same input file. I want to show you Action Center and how it works for document classification. Then I will use the human validated results to train my intelligent keyword classifier. And here is where things get really interesting. I will split the input PDF into separate files based on the classification results. Then I will redigitize the split documents because I need the DOM and the document text for those split files. This functionality will be covered in a future release of document understanding, but right now I have to do digitization again. In data extraction scope, I'm making use of the machine learning extractor and then I'm sending the extracted data to Action Center for human in the loop validation. After the human in the loop intervention, I'm using a train extractor scope in order to export my human validated data into a format that I can later use to retrain my machine learning extractor. And last but not least, I'm simply exporting the data into Excel files. Without further ado, let me run the process and explain 
just how it works together with Action Center. As a run the robot, the document will be digitized, classified using the intelligent keyword classifier. Then it will be sent into the Action Center. The robot has reached the wait for document classification and resume activity. Upon reaching this activity, the robot's execution is suspended. Essentially, my robot is free to run any other job right now. Execution will not continue until the action is completed within Action Center. I tried to manually resume execution, but as you see, the process got suspended again. Here we have the classification action where we can see 99% confidence and the results are correct. Oh, and by the way, this is our rotated document. It's facing the right side up and looking pretty good. I'm not going to go into a lot of the functionalities of classification station. Suffice to say that I can change the classification results as I see fit. I can split my file into as many documents as needed and of course output them as soon as I hit save. Now that the action has completed successfully, it's time to go back to studio. In unattended robots, execution would be automatically resumed by orchestrator. Since my robot is not unattended because I'm running in studio, I need to manually resume. This is fine for demonstration purposes. Now, based on our two classification results, our input file will be split into two different PDFs, which will be separately digitized. Data will be extracted using the machine learning extractor and two document validation actions will be created. The actions are ready and are waiting for my intervention. The robot's execution is suspended. Let's go back into the action center. We're going to take a bit of a closer look at this one because it is our PO the model is not familiar with. Overall, it got some data out of it. The new field that we wanted extracted, the ship via, this was missed, so I can just go and manually extract it. And of course, I can do any other correction theme necessary. I will show you how to use these two fields that do not require reference. For them, we have these new buttons, create a new value with no reference in the document. So for document approval, so I will approve this document and say, I really like this PO and I will save. Great, now that the action has been completed, I still have one unassigned, but I can go back to my robot and resume execution. The robot will continue processing the document that I have just validated, but will also wait for me to finish the validation of the second PO. We can easily see this. If I go to the output folder, we see that we already have the extraction results for our first PO. Let me just quickly complete this action. Resume execution again. And see the robot output, the second set of results. If I just open the first file, we see the values that I have manually filled in, as well as uh, this corrected extraction field. This sort of execution through Action Sender is great because I don't have to wait for the robot. And on the other hand, the robot doesn't have to wait for me. I only had to manually resume execution because I'm running in attended mode from studio. There's only one thing left to do. I want to use the data that I have exported using my train extractor scope and feed it back into the data manager. How do I do that? It's very easy. First, I will just archive this folder into a zip format, and then let me quickly go back to data manager. Now that I'm back in data manager, I can import the user validated data in order to expand my training data set. And I will simply drag and drop my zip file here. You can easily see that Data Manager has automatically recognized and imported my validated set as coming from the Machine Learning Extractor Trainer. With this brand new functionality, we can now close the learning loop and have the machine learning models learn from the user validated data. Of course, in order to properly retrain a machine learning model with user validated data, a lot more than just one document is needed. But that is a story for another time. I hope you found this session interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Cheers.